A few more hypotheticals here. They said if the nickel reduction half reaction was assigned zero, so here's the table as it exists in our world. They're saying what if nickel, where is it? Here we are. If this nickel reaction were our zero, well, if it were, right now it's negative 0 0.26, so if we want to make it our zero, we'd have to increase everything on the table by 0.26 volts. That would make nickel our new zero level. And all these other things would get increased by 0 0.26 volts. In this case, they're asking, what would the reduction for barium be? Barium's way down here third from the bottom on my list, minus 2.91 volts. But on the nickel standard, we'd add 0 0.26 volts to it. Everybody would go up by that same amount. And so that would make this minus 2.65 volts for barium ions getting reduced to barium. Now, they built a trap into this, do you notice? Our table says this. And this we said is minus 2.65 volts. But the reaction they're talking about here actually is barium oxidizing to barium-2 ions, which means if we flip this reaction around, what happens to the voltage? It should become positive 2.65 volts. So either they didn't mean to write the reaction this way, or uh, if they didn't mean to write the reaction this way, then the solution should be plus 2.65. So I think they may have had a bit of a blip when they were writing this, this reaction. It should, it should not be flipped, or if it is flipped, the answer should come out plus. This reaction has a negative voltage. This reaction, starting with barium metal, has a positive voltage. One more of these. If the fluorine reduction half reaction is assigned zero volts, where is fluorine? If you start at the top, you'll find it pretty quick because it's the very strongest oxidizer there is. Way up there. That's the fluorine reduction reaction. And on the hydrogen scale, it's 2.87 volts. So if we made this our zero, that would mean we're cutting all the numbers on this table by 2.87. Fluorine would be a zero and everybody else would be in the negatives because we'd go minus 2.87 off of every single one of these numbers. Okay, so what would be the net potential for the reaction where we have hydrogen and lead reacting. Well, let's go to our table here, our fluorine table. And if we go down here looking for our strongest oxidizer, it's hydrogen. The, the fact that we're on a fluorine scale didn't, didn't affect that. The strongest oxidizer in this container would still be hydrogen, so one of our reactions would be 2H plus plus two electrons would turn into hydrogen gas. And the other reaction coming up the right side would be, where are you, lead? That's lead with sulfates, not that. This one, lead turning into lead too. Okay, so those are our two reactions, and they're saying, what's the voltage for this? Well, remember we're on the fluorine scale, so all these numbers have been cut by 2.87 volts. Hydrogen would be 0 minus 2.87 volts, which would make it minus 2.87 volts. And lead, right below it, 
would be minus 3 volts. So hydrogen, we'd write minus 2.87, just like it says on the table. Lead, the new version is minus 3, but we're doing it flipped. We're starting on the lead side and going the other way, so it's actually going to be positive 3 volts. Add those together, and we get that the net potential would be 0 0.13 volts. Now, special bonus round. I'm going to do this again on the hydrogen scale, and let's see what happens there. So I'm going to use our regular data book. Forget about all this fluorine scale stuff. Let's see what voltage we get if we use our standard table. This is important. Stick around. If we do this on the hydrogen scale, then we have two... H plus plus two electrons turns into hydrogen, and the voltage for that is zero volts. That's why we call it the hydrogen scale, because the hydrogen is our zero. For lead, uh, the book says minus 0.13, but we're doing that reaction in reverse, so positive 0.13 volts. Lead oxidizing to lead 2, two electrons is 0 0.13 volts. Add those together, same result. So changing the zero level may change the numbers on your table. It doesn't make any difference to your final results, though. It doesn't change your cell voltages at all. Atoms don't care what standard we're using. A battery that you, ba that you make with with hydrogen and lead is going to be no, just as powerful no matter what standard you're working on because the standard ultimately doesn't matter. If you change standards, all these numbers go up and down by the same amount. So the distance between them does not change. And a cell voltage is all about the distance between your oxidizing agent and your redu reducing agent. So if these numbers are 10 versus 5, or if they're 110 versus 105, it makes no difference to the distance between. So we can, we can write a lot of trick questions about that, and I hope that you'll be able to shrug them off. If they say, what's the net potential for a reaction? You're like, well, I don't care what their standard is. I can use my standard, and I know I'll get the same answer. These individual half cells will have different numbers, but a full cell will not. Those don't change no matter what you do, what you choose as your reference cell.